Professional Serving Community, talkradio.nyc. Your boy's back, Tommy D, the one and only nonprofit sector connector. Two flights up from the kitchen. That's where I got this cup of Joe, a little bit of Java. Isn't that a cool cup? It's like it's got the horse on it. If you're not checking on in on the video, well, I don't know, know why you're not, but if you're only listening, I got this cool set of animal coffee mugs. They're like these tall coffee mugs. I didn't really get them. My wife got them at the Costco. Uh, used to be, I used to call that place. That was the Price Club back in the day. So sometimes I go, can we go to the Price Club? My kids go, what are you talking about, Tommy D? Anyway, the show is philanthropy. What are you talking about, Tommy D? Well, on the show, we talk about nonprofit organizations. We help them tell their story and amplify their message. And I was mentioning the coffee cup because I'm two flights up from the kitchen, just below the roof. That's right. I'm in the attic. I'm in the attic, baby. This is where we do the show. This is where I do most things. Except when I'm not in the attic and I do other things other places. But when I'm here, I'm focused on nonprofit work. I'm focused on telling stories. I got to give some, uh, just some gratitude out there to the universe of the world and specifically to some uh, individual people. Just this week, we did the nonprofit resource hubs, um, storytelling amplified. And I got a little bit of a bone to pick. I did, I founded this organization with some friends and some partners. But the bone to pick is for years, I've been calling this show up. I'm calling it philanthropy and focus, but I explain it as saying I like to help nonprofits tell their story, story and amplify their message. And then the nonprofit resource hub calls the event storytelling amplified. And I said, that sounds like a bit of copyright infringement. I got to get my copyright attorneys on the phone. If I wasn't one of the founders of the organization, maybe I'd really have a case. Anyway, I kid because it was an important day. I got to host a panel on a topic that I'm rather familiar with, it was called networking. And I <laughs> and I got to interview my friends and colleagues, Mahin Kaleem, Erica Floresca, and Kylie McGrain Zarnock. Kylie McGrain Zarnock is the founder of A Moment of Magic. Erica Floresca is the executive director of Long Island Children's Museum, where I hail from here on Long Island. And my friend and colleague, Mahin Kaleem from Grant Makers for Girls of Color. And we talked a lot about collaboration in the nonprofit sector. I'm not big on this whole thing that we're fighting over the same dollars. I said it yesterday, I'll say it today, and I'm sure I'll say it tomorrow. I think it's about collaboration. It's how do we find ways to work together? I don't think it's ever a lack of resources. I think it's a lack of collabor collaborative thoughts. And I think I said it yesterday when I was doing that. I felt like I was doing the show yesterday. And I said, it's it to me... I like to try as best I can to be from abundance. And at times, scarcity sneaks in. It sneaks into all of us. But regulate, reset, get back to abundance. Debbie Hughes is here. Talk about abundance, man. I, I mean, just what? Are, let me say hello to you and then rant about five other things before we get into the show. But good morning, Debbie good Hughes. Morning. What's up? What's going on? nothing much how are you i'm digging it man i'm telling you i i you know i saw our our colleague and friend joni last week when i was emceeing an event for the alzheimer's disease resource center and she said you need to get debbie hughes on your show and talk about strength for life and i said okay because that's how this show works when one of my friends says you know tell me D, I have somebody great to get on the show because without social capital i say we have nothing without our relationships we have nothing right so you know, and that's what kept coming up yesterday was this piece about relationships. Anyway, check out Nonprofit Resource Hub. The videos are there. We'll get it out to you. If you can't figure out how to get it, reach out to me, tommyd.nyc on Instagram, tommyd at philanthropy and focus, P-H-O-C-U-S dot com. And then the other thing is I'll get you connected to Kelly Ann Serini, who runs all marketing. I just saw an email this morning giving Kelly so many accolades. Kelly Ann Serini, we appreciate you. And uh, Allison Lafrolita, our executive director, we appreciate you. All the great speakers. So anyway, Debbie, we got to get you connected to NRH, the Nonprofit Resource Hub. That's super important. There's so much going on. There's so many resources. Uh, I really want to dive in. What I started to say there was it's all about social capital. 
saw Joni at this event last week. She said, you got to get Debbie on the show. I said, okay, let's do it. And you're here. That's how fast it works, gang. Let's go. I think this is 157th episode of an idea I had. Debbie just said to me in the virtual green room, she said, so what? It, why, why are you doing this? What is the story behind this? I said, well, I went around for two years telling people I had an idea for a show that I was going to do called Philanthropy and Focus. It had a logo. It had an idea. And then nothing happened because I was doing other projects. And then what happened was COVID started and I was home and we were all home. And then I was playing around with this show, like doing like not live or anything like that, but interviewing my friends on Zoom and recording it and putting it up on YouTube. And then it was January 21. We started the show. And now I plan on doing 5,000 episodes of this show. And that sounds like a lot. I know it's a lot. But what here's the thing. I want to do the show Monday through Friday, every single day. I want to start every morning doing an episode of this program because I love it. It makes me feel good. And I'm a little bit selfish when it comes to that. I want to feel good. So I get to showcase nonprofits and it makes me feel good. So everything is all about, you know, yes. Oh, wow. People are so selfless. Yeah, but they feel good when they're doing things. Just the other day, uh, Saturday, and then we'll get into our topic of discussion. Saturday, I went out with the Rotary Club uh, out here in Long Island. And we packed 15,000 meals. Uh, it, it was like an assembly line, Debbie. We had this thing where like one person puts in the rice, one person puts in the beans, one person puts in the flavoring packet, right? And then and at the end, I brought one of my sons with me. At the end, you had this thing which like um, heat seals the bag. And then the ba it was like, like assembly line, like uh, our guy, Henry Ford. And it was so cool, right? As I'm leaving, they said, um, hey, Tommy D, you know, thanks for the sponsorship can you, um, you get to take some of these boxes with you. These, so these cases that had 36 packs in each one. So I took three cases and I called a friend of mine, Linda Eastman over at Nosh, which is a uh, pantry up here, not far from where I live. So I dropped them off on St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. My point of telling you these, this stuff, guys, is there's so much opportunity to do these really cool things and just get involved. And my son had a great time. I made a bunch of new friends. I, you know, this is what you're supposed to do. And guess what? Here goes to the selfish thing. I feel good because I'm giving back. And, and that's the piece of this whole thing. So now you know my secret. All right, let's get into this conversation. Um, fitness specialist for over 20 years, experience in personal training, management, and compliance. Since 2007, has a focus on fitness for cancer recovery. The name of the organization is Strength for Life. And their tagline, if you will, is fighting cancer with exercise. And that's what we're calling this episode. You know, just before the show, it's funny. Just before the show, a colleague of ours mentioned something, you know, going on with a toothache or something like that. And I go, oh, clove oil. And you turn around and it was like clove oil, like right there. And you like have it like next to your your salt lamp. And you know, so we're kind of on the same frequency. All right. I, I think we're going to be friends. I think we're going to hang out together. I watched the video of what you all are doing. And some of the sessions you guys have and i want to be a part of it i want to help you know we are on strong island so let's get into this awesome. tell me your story i want to know who you are i want to know the story of this organization obviously like many organizations comes out of a, a tough story a tragic story um and then you know i think in terms of this this week gang if you haven't checked this out the this sunday in memory of my cousin linda the lindy lou foundation will be holding holding the lindy lou classic at the Syosset Bowling Alley, reach out to me, Tommy D, uh, at philanthropyandfocus.com. Or if you know me close enough, text me. We'll get you sorted out for the event. But in Linda's memory, we have this organization that gives back to organizations serving um, individuals with intellectual developmental disabilities. That's how I got on the board of Horse Ability. It's how I got on the board of Spirit of Huntington Art Center. All these type of things. I promise, Debbie, eventually you'll get to do all the talking on the show. Um <laughs> so that's so a Sunday morning gang, Sunday afternoon actually at Syosset Lanes, uh the Lindy Lou Classic. So in in similar um parallel, your organization starts off with with a loss. So can you tell me about how this organization got started, please? Sure. And it's um, you know, exactly what you're talking about. It's it became turning pain to purpose because that is the only way we were able to handle the loss. And um, so back in, oh gosh, I don't know, I was probably like 27, 28, 27 years old, I started working at a fitness center called Personal Training Institute. And my boss there, the co-founder of that 
uh, PTI as they were known. I yeah. love the name because everyone's like, I used to work out there. You where, know, yeah, where is it? Because as soon as you said it, I'm recognizing it. Where is it? What town? There were quite a few of them. So oh. I started in the Huntington Station location and uh -huh. then they franchised and they grew to, um, I don't even know how many they ended up having, but ultimately I ended up working, opening and working out of the um, Smithtown location. I managed that location. And um, the the woman, one of the ladies who started this old, uh, this business was named Evelyn Knapp and she co-founded PTI and she was my boss. So I had, up until that point in my life, I had never met someone as inspiring, motivating. Um, she just was a powerhouse. I mean, she had a, a couple of kids. She was running this business. She was just everything that a woman or a girl at that point would be like, oh my gosh, I want to be like that, you yeah. know? And she also, she would hold, like, I've had, obviously, by the time I was 27, I've worked for many people along the way. And um, she was just, like, one of these bosses that you were like, I'm going to learn a lot from her. Because she was all about um, positive reinforcement, educating. You know, she would do weekly meetings. She always had a quote of the day. I mean, good stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's but that's that that's that I I'll use the word frequency or my kids will say that's the vibe, Dad. And I can and I could dig that, although they don't think I'm cool, some of my kids, some still do, but like that's the frequency like that you're on, like putting good quotes out there, putting inspiration out there, putting good stuff in the world. It goes to what I talked about earlier about abundance versus scarcity, man. It's a choice. Every day we make a choice. And I I'm I mean, I'm in my world, my kids, I'm saying. Look, well, dad, I really don't want to go. All right. So what? So you go anyway. Suck it up. Let's go. Let's go to school. Like, that's the thing. Like, you know, the difference between people who are successful and people who are not successful is people who are successful do the things that other people aren't willing to do. <laughs> just, it's like yeah, a discipline. Like sometimes they don't want to do. Like, right? just, that's, But know? even the people who are successful don't want to do it. So they just do it anyway. Even if you don't want to, you just friggin' do it. Step up, you know? So she has these inspirational quotes and she's a great leader and you know, she's running this successful business and it's growing and, and children and the whole deal. So, yeah, so I um I went there. I mean, my story was a little funny with it. The only reason why I started working there was because I loved working out. <laughs> and I was at a point in my life where newly married, just bought a house, didn't have enough money for a gym membership. Huh. So I was like, OK, I'll get a free gym membership while working out this. You OK, know you very strategic, I say. I like that. <laughs> so, you know, who knew it would turn into what it turned into? So. Uh, Evelyn, my background really was in insurance and medical billing and stuff like that. It wasn't in, in fitness. Yeah. I just loved working out. I was always very kinetic and that was my mental, I would say, you know, the famous quote, I always tell my kids now, love what you do because that's what you're going to be doing uh, yeah. most of your life, yeah. you know, most of your time. And then you won't feel like you're working a day in your life. Exactly. I, I never took that advice until I met Evelyn and she kind of, she convinced me to go back to school for exercise science. She convinced me to, you know, Hey, there's, you love doing this. Why won't you make, make it your career? Like this is, you know, you're good at this. This is what you, you know, you know, maybe this is kind of your calling. And I was always like, no, oh, I enjoy it though. And she's like, yeah, that's the point. <laughs> that's great. Yeah. She's like, wait a minute. That's what I'm trying to tell you. You cracked the code, man. You got the whole thing. So, so it was an interesting, you know, growth process yeah. happening. Sure. And, um, so I did, I went back to school and ended up being a manager and, you know, helping them with the franchises as they open and stuff like that. So it was really, really good. And um, then I had a couple of kids under my belt and I would still work part time. And anytime I was just, you know, that was it. Um, then when she was 38 years old and that was in 2003, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And that was a shock because up until that point in my life, I hadn't even known anybody with cancer. And, you know, I've been very blessed with not really losing people in my life up until that point. I was 35 years old. Um, you know, so it was kind of like, wait, what? And she was the epitome of health. I mean, she walked the talk. She was a ran marathons, worked out, nutritionist, you know, the whole thing. So it was really, really shocking that that she had this diagnosis right. but with that being said everyone was like okay well evelyn's got it I yeah yeah it. she'll she figures things out she gets it solved right and you know she's healthy she's you know she's a bright woman she's going to do everything and she did she really um did traditional care and also got involved in a lot of um holistic treatments mm -hmm. you know 
And so she was, she was taking it on he, like head on yeah. exercise throughout her whole entire treatment, saying it was the one thing that gave her a feeling of control in a very uncontrollable situation. She felt like her body betrayed her. Yeah. And that was something that she couldn't wrap her head around. So the only way she knew to kind of get that back was to exercise. Now, back in those days, which we're talking 2000 and, you know, um, three around there, she was, um, going against the grain because even her doctor said, nope, bed rest is best. You get chemo, you eat whatever you can tolerate, which is like, okay. Yeah. And, um, and you just go home and just sleep. You so know? that's you know, that part too. So they're not saying, uh, okay, guys, I just got to let you know on a quick disclaimer. I'm not a doctor. Okay. Now we got that out of the way. Let's keep going. So, um, I'll yeah, that. <laughs> yeah that, that that I'm not a doctor or you're also not a doctor no. <laughs> so, so here's the deal with that though I mean you know I know people who've gone through chemo um a, a very close friend in fact somebody we have in common who uh calls it her her journey and she and I had coffee earlier this week and I love her uh she's a good friend of mine and um you know you, you think in terms of of course you should be eating healthy food <laughs> like what are you talking about like like, of course, you shouldn't be eating crap, right? Like, while well, and I heard what you said there, like, where the docs say, whatever you can keep down. Whatever. Okay, I've never gone through chemotherapy. Okay, I'm, so I'm not saying I understand that piece, but I've been very close to it um, um, and with family members and the like. So my question is, or my point is, of course, you want to eat healthy. Of course, you want to give the body what it needs. The body is battling something, and then you put in the chemo, and it's battling that. And, you know, so and, and as I'm watching a YouTube video, and we'll... I want you to finish the story real quick before we go to break. But as I'm watching a YouTube video of, of your organization this morning, um, <laughs> it was, of course, you want to exercise. Like, of course, you want to give your body, you know, like the good vibes, the endorphins, the good stuff that, you know, like I saw this. Uh, maybe I'll save this meme for, for later. Uh, here's what I, this meme says on, on Instagram the other day. It's like, oh, so you're depressed? OK, have you gone outside today? No. Have you eaten anything healthy today? No. Have you exercised today? No. Have you socialized with any other people today? No. Oh, oh, okay. Why are you no no questions there, right? So like, we need this stuff. So I, we have to take a break, but I want you to finish a little bit more of the story before we go to a break. So go back to that story about Evelyn. So I'll quickly wrap that up because it yeah. is you know, it's just one of those things. So long and short of it is, Evelyn lost her battle eighteen months into it. She left behind three little girls, and a husband and a thriving business. Um, it was just devastating. We nobody can wrap their head around it. And um, from, you know, she had already started kind of doing the groundwork, but getting exercise for the cancer patient into her facilities because yeah. she's like, oh no, we're changing this. You know, we're changing so, this. So she kind of, uh, tragically, you lost her at a young age, 40 year old woman should not be gone and, and tragically is gone. And but her legacy lives on. And that's what we're really going to dive into today is yeah. how you're living out her legacy as an organization and the impact you're making on other people, right? Yep. And, and that's what we said in the, in the moment that she passed away, he said, oh, no, we yep. are going to keep her memory alive and we're going to make her vision a reality. Love it. We're, that's that's over 20 years ago. Yeah, we're going to talk about that journey today. We are going to take a quick break right now. This is Philanthropy and Focus. Debbie Hughes is here at the organization Strength for Life. And I'm your boy, the one and only nonprofit sector connector. Right back. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. Are you a high achieving growth oriented leader? Are you interested in developing your authentic leadership while creating a healthy, inclusive workplace? Hi, I'm Dr. Mira Bronku, host of The Hard Skills on talkradio.nyc at 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, where we discuss how leaders develop the hard skills needed to make a greater impact. We interview experts, have live coaching, and tackle these challenges. Listen to The Hard Skills on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. 
Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy, and I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC. Uplift, educate, empower. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Tommy in his attic. All right, listen. Here's the deal. If you show up on my porch and you're knocking on the door trying to get up to the attic, I don't really have room for you. So, but join me virtually in the attic every Friday morning. Don't actually show up at my house, man. It's just it's just an attic. It's just like a bedroom on top of the house. Not that big a deal. But but I did say this. I was I met ran into somebody the other day. We had a nonprofit resource hub event at the Long Island Children's Museum. And I ran into somebody who works for a public broadcasting station. Um, I think it's called North Shore TV or something like that. And I was telling her, I was saying something about Wayne's World. And I was joking about the movie Wayne's World. And she thought I was giving her a hard time because like Wayne's World was like a public access show. Yo, listen, if you're too young to know what I'm talking about, I don't know what to tell you. Google Wayne's World, Mike Myers and uh, uh, oh my God, Garth, Wayne and Garth, um, Dana Carvey. If they did the show, Debbie, and they got a deal. Like somebody came to them and made in the movie, they were doing the show in Wayne's basement. And then they at a studio, they made Wayne's basement. So I have this dream. One day somebody's gonna create Tommy D's attic <laughs> on a sound stage. <laughs> and we're gonna do the show. I, again, when I thought of that back in the day, it mattered, you know, like as if we needed to go somewhere. And then the world is so different, you don't really need to go anywhere anyway. Only well, just everybody's doing this show. I mean, you see these former like Fox and CNN people doing shows from the, their backyards at this point. Like, it doesn't matter anymore. So I guess I don't need to. I'll just keep the real attic. Anyway, what a rant that was. To, of, 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 it's like Seinfeld, a show about nothing. I just sometimes go on about nothing. But I, it, people keep coming back, so it must be entertaining. So I said to you in the chat while we went to break, thank you for sharing. Thank you for your candor. I really appreciate this. And your reply back to me was this is what keeps our memories alive about people we've lost so let's go right back so unfortunately Evelyn lost her battle only 18 months in and she had created this vision I would say right so let's start there please so yeah she created this vision of bringing uh, you know um quality exercise to cancer patients because there is a different way to train ex you know people who are going through chemotherapy radiation um, and all surgeries and all that. So uh, she reached out to this guy by the name of Eric Durack, and he was in California. He was the only one at that time doing certifications um, as cancer exercise specialists. Um, right now, of course, the field is flooded with it. You can do an online certification at this point because it just gained so much steam over the years. But again, back then, this was going against the grain, the thought of exercise while in treatment. So he, um, she made connections with him and had made arrangements to have him come out to this coast and do a certification for, for those who are interested. Uh, well, she lost her battle before that can happen. And we still had connections with him. So he was doing a program at Greenwich Hospital one weekend and we hooked up with them and a group of us actually took the ferry over and we went to Greenwich and we sat in on that on that whole entire certification. And from there, um, two of us from the group, which was myself and Jackie Erico, who is the co-founder to this organization, uh, we from there came back to the island and we were like, okay, let's, you know, we have a great foundation. We were in touch with Eric all the time, uh, still to this day. And, um, you know, just with keeping up to date with what has changed, what new developments come out and how to better serve our, our clients. And um, we decided, okay, we're going to start supporting, you know, talking at support groups to educate people on, hey, it's okay to move when you're diagnosed. You don't have to sit in bed 
And in fact, it's not only okay, but there's studies that are starting to come out that say that you kind of got to do this. You are know? you getting that? Are you, so you, thank you for that piece about the studies. I mean, you have to, I mean, there's there are doctors out there that are board certified oncologists and board certified um holistic medicine professionals as well. I mean, I know one out in Reno, Nevada that I've done, you know, had some meetings and conversations with. And I have to think that the medical profession is, I, I gave a, you know, in the first segment, I, I, I went on a little bit of a rant about nutrition and things like that. Right. But I mean, the medical profession realizes this, right. And you have probably aside from studies and things like that, you probably have medical professionals that are saying, of course, it makes sense. If you can, you know, if you physically can get out and move around and do something, you should be doing it, right? But, but, but it also sounds like it's a little bit different. It's then, then maybe, hey, I'm healthy and I'm just going to go to the gym. There's some nuance to this. Is that right? Yeah. So, I mean, just like what you're bringing up about doctors and everything. Again, I this is what I tell our people all the time because once once someone joins our group, they're like, I don't, I don't know about you. I'm so happy I found out about you. This is amazing, you know, and. The, the, everyone always says, how come my doctors aren't telling me to do this? And it's it's not the doctors aren't telling you. I, and I always tell them, listen, they are doing what they know to do. Right, right. Keep people alive, right? Right. Keep through the medical, you know. Internet. It's a paradigm, right? Like, this is what I got. Like, I got years and years of success and studies in, in healthcare and medicine. This is what I have and this is where I live. And guess what? I think the point is, and I don't want to, like, be, like, negative on it. The point of it is... Yeah. Yeah. That's what I need. Like I, I, I'm hearing this in my head. Remember in the movie, you need me on that wall. You want me in that wall and a few good men, you know, <laughs> but, but you, that's who you want. You want your oncologist to be in that mindset. Plus then you have Debbie Hughes and company at strength for life that have a different modality that can support different parts. Right? Like, I guess if the doctors focus too much on calisthenics and yoga, well, I kind of need him or her focused on the other stuff, right? So that's the point that we always bring up and it says, you know, you know, we we do rely a lot on, and I'm jumping ahead probably about how people find out about us, but we re rely on nurse navigators. Um, they're kind of like the front line of mm -hmm. hey, what do you need? You you know, you have this diagnosis, what do you need? And if someone says, Well, I I you know I always used to move, I can I still move up. Oh, Okay, strength for life, that's your place. No kidding. So that's so cool. So, and there is really no rhyme or reason to this show. So you can say whatever you want, whenever you want. I always do. I mean, you should, you, you've you been with me for 27 minutes by now. You know what's up. This is just say words when you want to say them. But that though is key for me is the collaboration, right? There's a catalyst where, you know, nurses, maybe some MDs, you know, other, you know, maybe the health systems, you know, the bigs, there's many big ones out here on Long Island or a handful of big ones, at least um, collaborating with them. Right. That's a big piece of this. Yeah. And that's, you know, I do have, I have a ton of doctors that actually do recommend us. I mean, I get, I get their patients all the time and I love that piece of it because honestly, even though they, you know, they have to focus on what they focus on when you have someone that truly believes in your program and what you're doing, once they tell their patient, you need to exercise, there is no, they don't hear anything else. They're like, okay, I need to exercise. Because and it came, it's almost like an RX, right? It's like a rec, you know, they wrote, wrote, wrote it on your, write it on your little pad here, strength for life, you know, sign Dr. Smith. Yeah. yeah that's exactly what it is. But, you know, to, to go back, just to let you know how we started the nonprofit piece yeah. of it um, before we get into. Yeah. Why? That was what I was going to ask you. So you're, you're on the ferry, I brought Jeff, yeah. you go up to, you end up in Greenwich, you get the certification. Why didn't you guys come back and say, um, well, we should make a business? We did. Okay. And we were like, okay, we're going to do what Evelyn wanted. And that was bring this piece into her gyms. So her gyms were personal training gyms. So we were going to do, okay, a special certificate, you know, a special program for cancer patients, but they would be clients, right? Right. So we started going and, you know, we're working that piece out to how we're going to incorporate it into the uh, monthly program fee and all that. Yeah. Meanwhile, we go and we speak at our first support group. Uh, Mather Hospital picked us up. They were doing a support group. And this woman called us, heard about us somehow, no idea how. And um, we went, we showed up, we spoke, we did an exercise demo. And then they invited us to stay for the rest of the support group. And we were kind of like, um, okay, we didn't want to say no. So we stayed. That was life changing. And we sat there and we heard from this group of ladies, because it was specifically a breast cancer support group, about how cancer has you know, financially drained them. 
how they a lot of them couldn't work, how physical therapy got cut off because the insurance won't pay for it after 10 visits, 12 visits. But meanwhile, they still had no mobility. Um, we heard how their co-pays were up to $50 and they had to go five times a week. I mean, think about this. You know? uh, right there, well, hold on. You said, I think I heard you. Some of these people are out of work and they got to come up with 250 a week. Just to, yeah. yeah, Crazy. And then they get cut off from it and then they, they don't have anywhere to go or nothing to do. So we, Jackie and I, and we talk about it to this day. There's been so many God moments. You know, we, we're very, we have strong faith, uh, the two mm -hmm. of us. And we always say that we're doing God's work and um, that are angels. And we've lost many along the way in the 17 years of doing this. But they're the ones that really um, give us a lot of work here on earth because they're like, okay, no, now do this. And no, now do that. You know, they, we always they're, say- they're you're, So you're responding to the totally. need of the community, yeah? Yes. Yeah, exactly. It's all divine intervention, you know. So okay. that night was our first experience with it. And Jackie and I walked out into the parking lot and we looked at each other and we said, we're not charging these people a dime. Right. We know how to help them. We have the knowledge and I am not charging for my knowledge. Like we we got to help these people. This is crazy. Yeah. And we both said, we're starting a nonprofit. <laughs> love it. I love it. Our mouth to God's ears. We were like, even to that day, Tommy, I'm not kidding you. I was 30. Eight year old, yeah, I was like around 36 years old at that time. I had never attended an, a fundraiser. Right, you didn't know what that meant. I love that. So when we started, so when we had our focus at Vanguard Benefits, our agency, what I do professionally, you know, as a career, we said like, oh, we want to work with the nonprofit sector. Like we didn't know what that really meant either. Like I didn't know what nonprofits were. And then I started joining a bunch of boards and became the nonprofit yeah. sector. But you didn't even know, but you were like, so that's so cool because, and, and you said so many things that I want to go back to. Nonprofits gang change our world every single day they're on the front lines they're answering the, the call of whether it's divine intervention it's the universe whatever the deal is these are the people who make change in our world i always say let me get the coffee mug no big deal just changing the world that's what i always say no big deal just change the world of course it's a big deal okay that's the cute little i'm winking at you when i say that everybody of course it's a big deal People like you, Debbie, people like Jackie and Rico are changing the world each and every day. And your supporters and your volunteers and your board of directors are changing the world. And it's incredible. I wonder, because somebody just made a comment, um, you know, online about how fast we talk. I wonder, you, talking to you is like talking to my sister. Because like, you know, because this is how we talk. This is who we are. We're Long Island, baby. So this is what it is. So uh, we talk a little fast. I mean, I sometimes when I listen to an audible, I'll put it up to three times or one and a half or two and a half times to speed. You all might need to slow down philanthropy and focus. And for you, it might be a 75-minute show instead of a 60-minute show because we talk really fast and maybe you can't keep up. I don't know, Debbie. Whatever. <laughs> all right, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to a break. <laughs> Are you having fun yet? Oh, I, I love this. This is awesome. And like, I love talking about strength of life and learning about other nonprofits that you're sharing. I mean, it's oh, we're going to We're going to talk about You're going to be part of my world now. We're going to do some cool things together. I'm going to share the website as we go to break, everybody. There is an event coming up. Uh, so when you go to the website, which is strengthforlifeny.org, right away it comes up April 18th, and Joni is being honored. That's how this all happened when I saw Joni. It's like, Tommy D, you got to come. We're doing a casino night, and I'm one of the honorees. Like, okay, so I'll come. I'll be there. And so then why don't we just have Debbie on the show, and we're having Debbie on the show. All right, break time. I'm sharing the website. We'll be back. We're going to talk more about this special organization and actually what, what happens, the work you're actually doing with these not only women, but women and men and people going through this uh, really ultimate challenge and journey in their life. Stay close to your nonprofits, gang. Keep connecting. We'll be back in 45 seconds. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector, coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy and Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. Were you an essential worker during the pandemic? If you needed to learn stages of epilepsy, did you depend on advocates? Did you use new innovations to cope with mental and neurological issues? Maintaining high quality of life and keeping good mental health are what we all strive for. I'm Frank R. Harrison, host of Frank About Health, and each week, top healthcare influencers, professionals, and innovators answer these questions and more. Stay tuned on Thursdays at 5 p.m. on talkradio.nyc, and I will continue to be frank about health with all of you. 
Are you a business owner? Do you want to be a business owner? Do you work with business owners? Hi, I'm Stephen Fry, your small and medium-sized business or SMB guy, and I'm the host of the new show, Always Friday. While I love to have fun on my show, we take those Friday feelings of freedom and clarity to discuss popular topics on the minds of SMBs today. Please join me and my various special guests on Friday at 11 a.m. on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. You know, aside from saying uh, helping nonprofits tell their story and amplify their message, the show should also say we run out of time before we run out of words. And I know that's going to happen again today because it happens only every Friday morning. Debbie Hughes is here. One of the founders with her colleague, Jackie Enrico, founded this organization, Strength for Life. They are making incredible impact. I was just looking on, we're just sharing the website. Gang, there's Tai Chi classes, there's exercise classes. You could do this on Zoom. Not everybody's going to be able to make it out. There's retreats. So, first of all, I want to come to some of the stuff. I want to like, I want to attend. I was telling you, I think I don't think I said it on the show, but I did uh, the first time some restorative yoga. And gang, if you're going to do yoga, that's the one to do, man. Because you can just, it's actually like just chilling out, meditating. And you know, the the person uh, who was running the show gave me essential oils, and I was just chilling out. So it wasn't a whole lot of poses or anything like that. It was like there was just one pose, like just kind of lay there on your back. I like that. One. That was kind of a cool yoga. But I want to come to some of the stuff you all are doing. I want to be, you know, helpful and and bring some resources and different things I can. So let's hear about what a day in the life of this organization is all about and what, what are the services and stuff like that. Please, Debbie. Awesome. Yeah, I'd love to love to tell you. So we, you know, pre-COVID, there's always that divide, right? Pre-COVID, yeah. we, were, we had about uh, 13 different locations throughout Nassau and Suffolk County. Our motto, when Jackie and I started, we said, we don't want people to travel more than 10 minutes to get to an exercise class. Um, because for one, it's hard for a person who's not dealing with a diagnosis to get to an exercise uh, class. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, when you're dealing now with fatigue and you know everything else that's going on that comes with treatment it's very hard so that's why we kind of like we're calling ourselves the traveling trainers we're just gonna do whatever will let us in for a donated space we're gonna put a class in so that's kind of how that happened then COVID happened and we did um within 24 hours we were up on zoom and that's where we expanded a lot of our services because we started doing the exercise classes on Zoom. We wanted to keep our community together because not only is this about exercising, gaining strength, staying healthy, getting into survivorship, or if you're in there, reducing some of the effects that happened 20 years after your treatment, which could be lymphedema. There's a lot of studies showing now that it's not just an immediate thing. You gotta you know, kind of keep yourself moving in the right direction. Um, plus there's a JAMA report, just another study saying that survivorship um, is increased by 60% if you incorporate exercise into the treatment plan. So it's a real- Time out, time out, time out. There's another rule on the show. I might've just made this rule up, but when I hear something super important, we pause and we hit that a second time. Hold on a second. Please hit me with that information one so more time. Simon did a report saying that if you incorporate, this was a specific report uh, study done for breast cancer patients. I'm sorry, I apply to all cancer patients because movement is movement. And oh. but they they studied breast cancer patients and said that um you your increase of uh, survivorship is sixty percent when you incorporate exercise into the treatment plan. Get so, out and exercise. Do it, man. It ain't gonna exactly. be easy, but you know what? You made the choice to fight this thing, right? Get, you put yourself in the best position as possible, right? This is the beauty of it, like I was saying earlier when we started against the grain, right? exercise wasn't on the radar right. in 2010 the american college of sports medicine which is the governing people they changed their guidelines to say that if you have a cancer diagnosis you need to avoid inactivity at all costs but that isn't that, is that isn't that just like i was making the joke about the meme earlier but isn't that life being um sedentary and doing nothing is no good for your body forget about the fact that it sucks for your mental health but it's no good the body is not supposed to just lay around man it's supposed to do yeah. things 
So true. And so they, they said putting a lot of studies into it, you know, a lot of money into studying the benefits of exercise for the cancer patient. And surprise, surprise, it's all come back like, oh yeah, you have to do this. So not only does it reduce um, lymphedema, it reduces the effects of neuropathy, treatment related fatigue, a really great study showed sure. that exercise is better than any medicine on the market for treatment related fatigue. That's huge. Yeah. Um, I love what you just said about mental health because what accidentally happened in our classes was that all of a sudden, um, we call it the magic in our mission. We, Jackie and I did not attend for this. We are exercise people. We right. are there to get people stronger. And all of a sudden we realized you put a group of people in a room together, get them moving. So you have the endorphins going, right? Yeah, baby. And you, they have a shared experience. Yep. Forget it. It's yeah. And, and it's being with people too, is part of this, man. You know, like I will tell you this when COVID did happen and you know, it was that 11th was the Wednesday, March 11th and 13th was the Friday and the world changed. I mean, I look back at it. And so I built my life and my business around not being in an attic, <laughs> like not specifically an attic, but not being home. Right. Like I, I, way before I ever knew I had this blessing called ADHD, I realized I could looking back, I could have known I had it, but like but before I knew I had this blessing, I really set up my life so I could get meet new people, see new things, talk to this, do that, right? And like that's why when I say I make this joke, like, hey, I just got this diagnosis with ADHD. I was the last one to know. I think that's a funny joke, but that's why, but the point of it is, is like I built a life like that that was not sedentary, not in one room, not in one building. It was all over the place. That's, I think, what we're supposed to be doing, though, is, is that's how you get to see people and you meet people and you connect with people, right? So being in these rooms, like I'm listening to you and I'm like, of course, these people are getting good vibes because they're in community. Of course, they're getting good vibes because they have, you know, one of the women on your video had this just shared experience that um, I, I'm going to misquote in some regard here. But it was like where in the, in the outside of the room with people in the in these programs, she kind of felt like she's the person with cancer. Right. And then inside, everybody's together. We're all together. I mean, we're not even talking about that. That's just like, that's just, you know, that's who we are here. Right. Yeah, so our, our focus right. isn't your cancer diagnosis at right. all. You know, it's, it's you as a whole person. And, you know, there is a, we, I just had a retreat this weekend. So to, to back up, we had. Where do you go for the retreats? What, like, how does that work? We hold them at a local hotel. Um, we do, it, we started them in 2009. This past weekend was my 43rd retreat. Oh, so, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so happy. I'm planning. I'm planning something big for the fiftieth. I don't know yet. How often does a retreat happen? Saying, okay, we're gonna go to an all inclusive like Caribbean. I'm like, <laughs> are you sure? That's a big deal. You got to get some funding on that one because you got to get planes involved and all sorts of stuff. What? Yeah. What though? Um, you know, how how often do they happen? The retreats. Yeah, so we do the retreats four times a year. Okay. So basically, you know, once a quarter. Um, and really during those retreats, our focus is the way everything organically happened with strength for life. You know, we started the exercise we, yeah. as we're in exercise classes, we're realizing, Oh, they need each other. Oh, this is really, this is crazy. What's going on. Then we realized that there was a lot of misinformation or no information about things that Evelyn did acupuncture, mm. um, herbs, you know, naturopathic doctors I know. When we started talking about her journey in the class. People were like, wait, what is that Reiki? You know, yeah. Yeah. what is that? And so Jackie and I said, you know what? We want to, we also want to introduce them to all of these modalities Yeah. just because the whole entire thing is maybe exercise isn't your thing and that's not giving you that control that you want. But guess what? Maybe meditation is, I maybe know. Reiki is, maybe sound healing is, maybe art therapy is. And let's offer it to them. And our whole thing was we want to give what each individual we're all built so differently what each individual individual person would need to help them heal on their journey we need so to connect you to the I, I, we got to connect you to the spirit of huntington art center because you just said art therapy i'm on the board there we'll get you out because that's an important awesome. organization we're gonna yeah. get you. what were you going to continue about the retreats though please yeah so that's that's why our retreat started our very first retreat in 2009 we had no idea just like we had no idea what we were doing with this we were like, okay, we're just going to get 20 women who want to, or men, you know, because we do help. Again, we are all cancers. It doesn't matter. Um, we got 20 women together, though, and we, I don't even know how this whole thing started, but we ended up hosting them for the weekend. We paid for everything. 
uh, breakfast, lunch, dinner, overnight accommodations, breakfast the next day, and we introduced some different healing modalities. So from that day to fast forward, 43 retreats later that I just had, um, we've come a long way. We've actually introduced couples retreats now because we do realize that caregivers play a huge role in this. Hundred percent. I just did an event. I was the I, actually when I saw Joni, and we talked about you was at the Alzheimer's Disease Resource Center event. It was the MC purple suit, the whole thing. I love that suit. I just wish I could find more reasons to wear it. So that, uh, <laughs> come on, Tommy, pay attention. So um, we were at that caregiver. Self-care is not selfish, gang. It is not selfish. And, you know, caregivers go through so much. And to be, give them an opportunity to not only have respite alone from the person they're caring for, but together in community again, right? Couples. So yeah, couples retreats. Yes. Dude, you run an incredible organization. You probably have all the money you guys need, right? <laughs> <laughs> I do that to all my nonprofit friends. Of course, they need to raise more funds. We're going to talk about casino night in a second. But give me one more piece on, on retreats that we can envision as we go to a break. So I'll just say this this past retreat, you know, people who have never met each other before come together in community. And we this retreat, we did the breakfast, lunch, dinner, overnight accommodations, breakfast the next day. And we introduced meditation, sound healing, line dancing, we do, always do karaoke at the end of the night because it's about what? having fun, right? So, it's about having fun and-, and I Love it. I got, here's my quick question for you. Do you do karaoke? I do. And do, you have just, a, do you have a go-to? Can't sing doesn't mean I won't. 100%. <laughs> listen, people who listen to the show know sometimes I'll break out into song. So do you have a go-to karaoke song before we go to break? Do you have a go-to? We just did Holla Back Girl the other day. That was pretty. Ain't cool. no holla from Gwen Stefani. <laughs> I'm a, I love Gwen. I love that's Gwen back to like, um, you know, I love Gwen back to No Doubt. Like, No Doubt, Gwen's fun. Yeah. Right. All right. So I do have one, and maybe I'll tell you all. All right. I'll tell you all. Roadhouse Blues by the Doors. Big Jim Morrison fan. That's my go to. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Anytime you guys want me to sing, just text me. I'll sing to you. We, <laughs> Debbie, do you believe this show? I love the show. I get to do whatever I want. I love it. It's so fun. We'll be right back. Debbie Hughes, Tommy D, and we will bring the show to a close. Right back. Are you a high achieving growth oriented leader? Are you interested in developing your authentic leadership while creating a healthy, inclusive workplace? Hi, I'm Dr. Mira Bronku, host of The Hard Skills on talkradio.nyc at 5 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays, where we discuss how leaders develop the hard skills needed to make a greater impact. We interview experts, have live coaching, and tackle these challenges. Listen to the hard skills on Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on talkradio.nyc. Hey, everybody. It's Tommy D, the nonprofit sector connector, coming at you from my attic. Each week here on talkradio.nyc, I host a program, Philanthropy in Focus. Nonprofits impact us each and every day, and it's my focus to help them amplify their message and tell their story. Listen each week at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time until 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant, and on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. You're listening to Talk Radio NYC at www.talkradio.nyc. Now broadcasting 24 hours a day. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through all the static. Join Tommy in his attic. What a blessing it is to be Tommy D. <laughs> that might be my new song there. I, you know what? Do you do you have a song? Does your organization have a song? Uh, no, we, we don't. We could probably I get you one. We, we were going to have a song because we just did it at one of my retreats last year. And we have a video on it. But it's the uh, Three Little Birds. Don't worry. Oh, the, that's uh, the Bob Marley song. It's going to be all right. Yeah, that, Every little thing is going to be all right. 
Who knew? I got to see that movie, that Bob Marley movie. I think it came out last month. I want to see it. I'm going to go by myself, to be honest with you, because I don't really want to talk to anybody. I just want to watch the movie. You know, like I I usually go to like Super Mario Brothers and like, you know, what's the one? The Trolls movie. These are movies I get to go to. I, good people, good company that I go with. My four children, or at least the two little ones still like. Yeah, I do have four children. That's a whole nother show. It's a whole talk about tangents related to ADHD, Logan. Maybe this is one of those you were talking about earlier today. All right, let's get it back at it. What's upcoming for the organization? We know Casino Night. It is the 18th. You are honoring Diane Brake, Jennifer Califati, Joni Matarash, and Susan Ruffini. And that event is at the Stonebridge Country Club. I know it well out in Smithtown. Um, tickets are still available for the 18th? Yes, they are. Tickets, tickets still available. Tips, everything. I it's plan on going, gang. So if you want to hang out with your boy, you know, let's go. We're, oh, we're, I plan on being there. Um, so let's figure this out. What What do you need? Who can we thank? Who? What relationships are you looking for? That sort of thing. Yeah. So Strength Life, obviously, we always look just for supporters who believe in what we're doing and um, will, you know, pay it forward by supporting our programs. So, you know, there's a few things that we have out there for one. And it just reminded me, not reminded me, she's always on my mind, but one of our, when you're flipping through the website yeah. uh, where it says what our thrivers are saying, we do have a five-star rating on non great nonprofits, which I think is really important because if people take the time to write a review, to me, that says a lot about, you know, what we're providing and what is being said out there, obviously, is that they, people found their tribe and, you know, um, you know, we're a solid organization. So I, I really love getting those reviews, but it, I saw the picture of Valerie Mortimer who lost her battle last year on March 26th. Mm. A very inspiring lady. She wrote this book called Along Came Cancer and all proceeds from this book get donated back to Strength for Life. Valerie, wherever you are in the universe, we appreciate you, we love yeah, you. Yeah. And so she leaves her legacy by writing this book. Show us a book again. Um, this is right here, yeah. And it's a, it's an excellent book for anyone who is newly diagnosed or out of treatment because she was very inspiring, uh, very funny. She had a she was a nurse by trade, so it's a it's a great take from both sides of the fence. And yeah. you'll learn a lot in this book. She was metastatic breast cancer, which is a different animal. Yeah. Um, all those who are. So do you guys? So do you? How do you incorporate the book into what you're doing? Is it you know? Do you try to sell like? Because I, you know, I would see an opportunity for maybe I'm not going to call out any big health systems. They know who they are, but like maybe they can, you know, purchase a bunch of books. And so it's not exactly right, it's not just writing a check, hey, strength for life, but it's like, let's do this thing. I know some of these people, these health systems actually yeah. was in meetings with them earlier this week. So maybe there's a thing there. Maybe there's an opportunity there, right? To to have them give these. Absolutely. And her husband really uh, made it his mission. And along with strength for life has done this too. To keep her legacy alive by getting these books. What's his what's his name? Jim Mortimer. Hey Jim, it's Tommy D. If you're listening, let's connect because I wanna I have some ideas for moving that book and getting more money for this organization. You'll, you'll see him at our event too. He, he's I'll be there. He, yeah, so that's awesome. I'll what's the what's the dress code for this event? Because I, I tend to be flashy. Uh, that would be perfect. Okay. <laughs> Anything goes. All right, good. Okay. Might get you up there if you <laughs> <laughs> what do you what do you need? How can we get you? I mean, we, we always look, I really, what I do, like, and I know at our event, what we're going to do, we do pledges because I really try to get our wellness retreats covered. They're about $6,000, um, a retreat. to put okay. We do four of them a year. Um, that's a huge, you know, offset for us. We do have 12 exercise classes in now. We are everywhere from Riverhead all the way out to Zuckerberg Cancer Center. I'm hopefully breaking into Queens very shortly. I was just on the phone with New York Presbyterian the other day. So, Where, so when you go there, like, what are you talking about? Because I got it, it, people on this who listen to me know that the Queens Chamber is very close to me. So if you need some relationships in Queens, we can help there. Yeah, um, and again, my, my mission is to get exercise classes available to all cancer patients. Um, and originally when Jackie and I started, we did not want to be near hospitals. But uh, over the years, that has totally changed because we realized that people are comfortable going where they had treatment and where yeah. the doctors are and we were trying to get them away from it but there was so no what do you do you'll go to like a this is an old word but like a multi-purpose room like something like a remember the, i don't know man i remember when i was in like the fifth and sixth grade we had a multi-purpose room but like is it like a some kind of conference room in the hospital setting like i'm thinking of i have some family members who would go over to monter over in yeah. like New Hyde Park. Part That's Zuckerberg now. Yeah, yeah. They changed uh, yeah. the name. Yeah, oh, so, they just, they so, must have just changed the name. Like they, just. Yeah, would, recently. Yeah. yeah. 
So that's a perfect example because at Zuckerberg, or it used to be Monta, yeah. we, uh, we're in the hallway. I don't look, I don't ask for much. I will exercise anywhere. I love that. How about this? Because listen, I have this space heater on right now because it gets super cold on the top of my house, but it's only now because spring has sprung. And I wonder, do you ever do classes outside? Like a little meditation, a little yoga outside, that sort of thing? Yeah. Yeah. So all we do, we really do like with our in-person exercise classes, it's all strength training. That is our focus. We give everyone their equipment. We work with resistance bands and FISO balls and yoga mats. Everyone gets the equipment to keep. Um, so you don't, it doesn't cost anybody anything that comes. That's so cool, but who's your major funder then? Somebody's really funding this or is it so all? We, um, we do, we do look, look for like local nonprofits like Pink Aid has been very good to us over the years. Very grateful for their support. Um, we do partnerships with local hospitals, Northwell, we partner for two facilities, New York Cancer and Blood, we partner at two facilities, um, NYU Lagoon, you know, so we, we look for partnerships in that way. Cancer Care, we have a partnership starting uh, on April 8th with them to do a series. Um, the North Fork Breast Health Coalition, who we're honoring Susan Ruffini from that organization, great organization out east. They, we partner with them to hold exercise classes for their coalition. So we, you know, we kind of try to do partnerships that way. As far as just funding, I am always looking for someone who really believes in what we're doing again and has maybe a connection to it and who would independently just fund us. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. Listen, gang, I mean, that's what this part of the show is all about. It's what you need. So listen, if you're out there and your family was touched by this and you have the means and you want to support this, you don't have to support every single program, but I mean, somebody might want to get behind, Hey, listen, you know, you do these quarterly events for the retreat. It costs six grand. Somebody of means who this hits home with can write a check for six grand. That ain't a big deal. You know, it's, it's all relative what somebody's situation is and their want and their desire. How, um, I, I, how do I help? Like, what what can we do next? I mean, the show is over now. And now, like, uh, this for me is always like, okay, now they put Tommy back in a box, they put him in a closet, and then the show is over. And that's not what happens. I have a busy day. But but what, <laughs> what, what like, what's next for, for this? How can we get... The, the networking thing is huge, Tommy. I mean, if you know, I always say we can't help people if they don't know about us. I mean, right. funding is great. Believe me, I don't, you know, whatever. But my whole entire mission is connecting people you know, who are going through a cancer diagnosis. So they, those diagnosis, so they find their tribe. Um, they are stronger together. We, we're we blessed that we can put all these people in a room and get them stronger yes. while connecting. And I just want everyone, again, I can't tell you how many times people come to me like, I can't believe I just found you now. I yeah. can't believe I just found you now. I don't want that anymore. We need to get the word out there and everyone has access to it. We're here for them. So that that is big and then hopefully the funding by the grace of god comes you know listen we jackie and i always said we never um i don't want to say we never had to worry you can't worry about this we're doing god's work and everything will be provided so i'm going to bank on that but i just want to get everyone who wants to exercise who wants to attend the retreat i don't want to say no to anybody and get them out there i love it's it how do they get in touch with you because we got to go debbie debbie hughes how do they Yep. Right on right on the website. You can register for any of the classes. You can register for our newsletter. Um, you can just go right through there or you can contact me directly. Strengthforlifeny.org. Strengthforlifeny.org. And this phone number I have here, 631-882-3387. That's how they can reach out to the organization. Listen, everybody, get involved with your community. Make the world a better place. I only have 50 years left here, man. I can't do it by myself. I need you guys to get involved and make an impact. Debbie, I appreciate you. I'd give you a hug, but we're not really here. So I'll give you a virtual hug. I'll see you later on. Make it a great day, everyone. I will be back next week. I'll see you then. Bye. Thank you, Tommy. Nonprofits need connections to move in good directions. So cut through 